Namaste. Welcome to Agriculture Affairs in Nepal special with me, Nirmala Basnet. Dear viewers, today we have Dr. Kedar Budathoki with us. Dr. Kedar Budathoki is a horticulturist who worked in NARC for 35 years. Now he has his own brand of hybrid seeds of vegetables, which were developed in his own farm in Naku. I'm excited to speak with our guest of the day today on dragon fruit. The dragon fruit is originated in the Central America. It spread across the world from there. It is a cactus plant. The flower of the dragon fruit blooms at night. This dragon fruit is also known as the Honolulu Queen. It is good to cultivate in the dry areas where there's less water. The fruit itself is very nutritious. It contains a lot of vitamins. Many experts say that this fruit fights cancer and prevents cancer. Vietnam is the country that produces the most dragon fruits in the world. In Nepal too, this fruit is becoming very popular. There are special farms in different districts of the country for this fruit. The dragon fruit is relatively more expensive. However, in the recent times, it is loved for the high quality nutrition. Before I talk to our guest, let us now look at this report on dragon fruit for a little while. Although its cultivation is particularly successful at altitudes of up to 1,500 meters above sea level, the townspeople have started cultivating it in the terrace, patio, and courtyards in recent times. The townspeople have come to the dragon fruit nursery in Kalikastan to cultivate the most sought-after and liked dragon fruit in their own backyard and courtyard. Vashudev Dakal of its operation has planted 600 saplings of dragon fruit in 400 flower pot in his house and courtyard. After two years, uh, when we planted uh, this plant, uh, after two years, it start to uh, get fruit, then continue uh, 20 to uh, 35 years, we can produce uh, continuously this fruit. This uh, fruit uh, produce uh, uh, after uh, 30 to 35 uh, days uh, from flowering days. In Nepal, dragon fruit cultivation is originated from Vietnam. This fruit, which has 12 types of minerals and vitamins, also has antioxidant and anti-cancer properties. This fruit, which is species of cactus, can be cultivated in tropical places. It can also be grown commercially in the central hills, Besi, and in the inner Madesh and Tarai districts of Nepal. In recent times, the common people have started planting them in the flower pot anyway. Actually, this fruit uh, for the uh, fresh food, uh, we can eat fresh food. Uh, then if we produce uh, in large scale, uh, we can produce uh, many, many byproducts uh, like uh, uh, milkshake, ice cream, uh, powder, juice, wine, uh, beautification products, uh, uh, sun cream, chipstick, lipstick, many, many types of products uh, we can product by this fresh food. For dragon fruit, there should be no water, no sap, and no shade, and strong sunlight. It can be cultivated on any soil, including dark, red, fuzzy, sandy, loamy, clumpy, or whatever. It can withstand temperatures up to 45 degrees Celsius in the summer and 2 to 3 degrees Celsius in the winter. It can be cultivated generally in any month particularly suitable for transplanting from Asuj to Jest. When planting a dragon fruit plant, the root should be well rooted on the bottom and the shoot at the tip should be well grown. Adult plant branches that bear fruit can be put directly into the ground or into a flower pot. However, it is considered to be the most suitable for the temperature range of 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. It can also be cultivated in Tarai, Inner Madesh, and Hilly region where paddy, maize, wheat, oil seeds, pulses are cultivated. It grows in the riverbank, 
dry land, sloped land, terrace wall, and all the other non arable land. It is very easy. Uh, this is very smooth and very nice, and you can cut easily. I saw uh, this is fresh fruit. Uh, uh, we can cut uh, this pipe. It is very easy. Uh, this is the pulp, and here are many, many seeds. And we can eat directly by spoon, uh, no problem. And we can eat uh, these types of uh, place. Yeah. Uh, you can try, please. You can try. Uh, this is pulp, just this is the cover. Uh, we remove this cover yeah. from this fruit. Yeah. Then we just you try, please. You try, sir. Yeah. <laughs> you try. Yeah. Very tasty yeah. and very sweet. Um, so it is very easy to cut and use. Um, no any problem. After the report, let us now talk to our guest. Welcome, Dr. Kedar Puratoki. Thank you. How are you today? Oh, it's all right, all right. Thank you. So this dragon fruit is being talked about in Nepal frequently. Exactly. Uh, why are people so excited about this dragon fruit? What is this dragon fruit? This uh, dragon fruit is recently introduced, although it was introduced 20 years back, 18, 20 years back, by one gentleman yeah. in Bhaisipata area. Yeah. And uh, people, you know, these days you know, people are very looking for good health yes and the dragon fruit contains certain chemicals certain elements which are very good for preventing the cancers yeah B this is due to the effect of education you know those who are educated they want to eat dragon fruits that's why this is introduced in nepal and uh, it, it, it is cultivating in mostly in kitchen garden and uh, commercially there are few farmers in west nepal in east nepal in central nepal there are few farmers who are growing this dragon fruit in large scale, yeah. one bigger, uh, 20 katha, 60 katha. So in total, 10 hectares of land under this dragon fruit. Yeah. And this year it has been increased largely. So maybe by next year, it will be 20 to 30 hectares under this crop. Oh, that is wonderful, mm. that is wonderful. So how many types of dragon <coughs> fruits are there? What kind of dragon fruit grows in Nepal? A yeah, commercially varieties of dragon fruit species are three. There are yellow fruits, red fruits, and white fruits. Yeah. And these are the species, three species of dragon fruits. Right. And in Nepal, commonly grown um, fruits species are the red fruits, red fruit bearing plant. Because red fruit contain lycopene, which is good for the uh, fighting cancer. It contains anti Oxidant. Yeah, so this, this is, is this is uh, red. Yeah. This, this red is uh, it contains lycopene. That is wonderful. This uh, sounds really mm. a very very wonderful fruit. Now, in the intellectual world, climate mm. change is a very big issue. Is this dragon fruit being introduced to counter the effects of climate change? Actually, to me, you know, um, uh, this uh, coincidentally, dragon fruit is suitable for the climate change. Climate yes. change means increasing the temperatures. Yeah and decreasing the rainfall. Yeah. So this crop is good in r scarcity rain for the rain area. It needs let little water and high temperature. It can tolerate up to 45 degrees centigrade. And it can, uh, it can tolerate low moisture content of the soil. So uh, th in climate change condition, Nepal condition, this is very good crop for the climate change conditions. So this, this crop is even good for the good conditions, even if, if the soil mass is good enough, it, it does well. If there is no soil mass, even it does well. So this, if the temperature of the soil is 20, 25, 30 degrees, it, it does well. So these crops now growing, are growing in Nepal in, deep, in good conditions, that's why they are producing very good. Taste of the uh, dragon fruit cultivated in Nepal, produced in Nepal is very tasty because of climate. Oh, climate yeah. How many farms are there in Nepal that are cultivating dragon fruit? Actually, exactly, I can't say, but I, I think 20, about 
10 hectares are under the currently under 10 hectares and another 10 hectares is going to be uh, cultivated by this crop coming season. Mm -hmm. So, it is 20 hectares. So 20 hectares means it is very little but increasing very, very fast. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, people say it is expensive. Uh, yeah. Where is the market for this fruit? No, market is you know what happened these days those who want to eat the fruit they are growing themselves and the fruits which is surplus they are selling to different departmental stores supermarkets supermarket is the main uh, market for the dragon fruit those who grow surplus fruits but you know these days even in the common fruit shops these are seen now the people they import from the Vietnam and because demand is very high people they want to eat very much so our products our production in Nepal is not adequate to fulfill the demands so, this businessman they import from Vietnam and uh, sell in the cartoon market. Yeah. So, how profitable is it? It is uh, the way you talk is very, very profitable. No, it's, uh, and uh, what, uh, what will be the production cost? Exactly. Because yeah. you know, in first year, in, in two years, first two years, it produces fast fruits. In two, in two, in two, in two, uh, after planting two years, it produces fast fruits. In first year, the crop gives about two kilos. Okay. In third year, it gives four or five kilo. Okay. In five in five years, it gives ten kilo. In oh, that's wonderful. In ten kilo. Yeah. So if you if you calculate well of six to seven years, uh, years, uh, it gives about more than four hundred to five hundred rupees per rupee. Oh, okay. It's a gross profit. Okay. And cost of production cost is very little because it needs it does not need very fertile soil. Okay. It does not need very very water, it does not need many than insect paste. Uh -huh. Insect paste are minimum in this case. Oh Recently right. some bacteria and fungus disease are seen, but this can be minimized by the organic pesticides. So cost is in, in uh, per ropani, it, the cost does not go 40,000 per ropani per year. So in profit look, profit is very high. Very high, very yeah. good. Because, because these days the price is very high. Yeah, so uh, the way you are talking, then uh, this, uh, you know, um, this cultivation is very, very easy. Very easy. So it's very easy. So um, when do we plant this uh, fruit? When do yeah. we start cultivation? It's easy. Yeah. Uh, there's no need of fertilizer. There's no need of pesticides. So when do we cultivate the best this? The best season, best month for the planting is, you know, from before monsoon yeah. to post monsoon. Right. Means June, May, June to up to September, October. But we should avoid, uh, especially when there is a acute low temperature, mm -hmm. January, February, March, January, then December, January, February. So in three, in these three months, we don't recommend to plant. Okay. Otherwise, nine months are okay for planting. This any, any, any time you know uh, within these nine yeah. months, you yeah. can, uh, you can you yeah. know, put them in the soil and it starts yeah. growing. Because we can, we plant already rooted plant. We buy the rooted, we raise the rooted plant, yeah. and we plant them in the um, permanent places. Oh, yeah. okay, that's uh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So, what kind of fertilizer, if we uh, want to fertilize it and make the production higher, you know, what kind of fertilizer is? No, because good? as other plant, it also needs in the NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potass. But this nitrogen, phosphorus, potass should be given in through organic matter, organic manure. Organic manures are available, like. You know, in compost, animal manures, poultry manures, wild cake, bone meal, meat meal. So these are the uh, manures which are good for these crops because we don't uh, recommend for the uh, recommend the chemical fertilizers, and they are very these uh, organic manures are very inexpensive also. Oh, right. It's, it's uh, easily available locally available. So we recommend we use these organic manures. So organic manures, if you use them, uh, will it bring down the cost of production? Exactly, because it is it is locally made, it is homely made, yeah. it is available locally, so it is not very costly. But at the same time, we should add some add some you know um, uh, micronutrients. Okay. Micronutrients means means or a small quantity needed plant. You know, micronutrients are the elements which are needed in a small quantity, but they are required for this plant. So in this case. Micronutrients are very also they are also very cheap like copper, zinc, boron, because boron is very important because in, um, it increases the fertility of the plant, pollination of the plant, fertilization of the plant. 
So, we uh, we need to apply little amount of micronutrients and organic matters. So, in that case, uh, with this, the crop does well. Okay, so um, so it is uh, it is cheaper to use fertilizer that is organic, mm. and uh, we have higher production, which is healthier. Okay, not so only that one because uh, apart from the cheapness, uh, it also good <coughs> for the uh, consumption. You know, because the um, because add add addition of chemical fertilizers reduce the you know taste of the fruits. So organic matter increase enhances the taste. And chemical fertilizer reduce the taste. So in that case, we want very tasty dry, um, dragon, dragon fruit. fruit. So That's we, wonderful. Yeah. So where in Nepal can it be grown without any fear of loss? Without mm. any fear of loss, you know, where can we grow? No, I think um, anywhere uh, we can, you know, up to fifteen hundred meters. Right. From Tarai to fifteen hundred meters, up to Kathmandu Valley, wow. we can grow well. Yeah. But beyond that, Mustang, Jumla, Humla, where there is a, then where there is a frost, where there is a snow. It does not well, so we can grow up to fifteen hundred meters altitude from the sea level. So it does well, and it is um, very profitable, and it has got a good market also. Okay, this is wonderful. Okay, thank you for being with us, Doctor Kedar Bodatoki, um, in this Agriculture Affairs in Nepal special. Yes. Um, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We all heard all about the dragon fruit from our very own horticulturist, Dr. Kedar Buratoki. With a change in the climate and lack of water, you might like to start dragon fruit farm of your own. This could be a very profitable business for you. This is all in Agriculture Affairs in Nepal, special with me, Nirmala Basnit. Thank you for watching. I'll be back with more affairs next time. Till then, Jai Krishi, Jai Kishan, Samrita Krishi, Nepal Kushan. Mm -hmm.